Good evening everyone, welcome back to the MCM Outdoor Show. Um, tonight when I got in from work, been up to the loft because I'm going back to the Lake District on Saturday. So I've decided to make just a short video just to show you some of the kit we've got. I've been going outdoors, walking, wild camping, hiking, uh, you name it, since the age of about 14. And the amount of gear that we've amassed is, um, or I've amassed, is absolutely <coughs> ridiculous. My loft looks like something from Go Outdoors and um, got, you know, I've got quite a collection. So I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to be going on Saturday yet, but it will involve a tent, obviously. Um, and as such, I thought I'd show you my collection of tents and hopefully you find this video interesting. So I've split them up into four season mountain tents, campsite um, tents, smaller tents for a campsite or you could possibly get away with backpacking or wild camping with and then proper wild camping tents which really lightweight and one of the ones that I've used on the last couple of videos over the, the last couple of days. <coughs> so I'm just going to run you through these very quickly, it's not going to be a long video and hopefully you find it interesting. After this one I'm going to show you uh, rucksacks, some of the stoves we use and ultimately there'll be a series of videos showing the kit I would use on a winter wild camp, summer wild camp, hammock camp and talk you through different camping scenarios and give you a proper rundown and kit list of all the gear I would use. Again, to anyone that's not done it before, hopefully you might find that interesting and gain something from that. So, without further ado, you'll also notice the post work gin required after eight hours in the hell hole. A bit of Banksy wall art just for a bit of inspiration and uh, Always look at that and remember to uh, to follow your dreams to achieve your goals. So enough cheesiness and uh, let's look at the kit. First of all, <clears throat> we're going to look at the the proper four season mountaineering tents. Number one is the Mountain 25 by North Face. Um, got that tent a number of years ago because um, I wanted something that I could use 365 days of the year in the depths of winter in Wasdale. Uh, I know this tent will perform solidly. This is the US version. Again, it's the Mountain 25 by North Face. It's the US version because the European version isn't seam sealed. So that's bizarre. I don't know why, but that's a fact. Um, it's a geodesic design. It's a, it's a double layer tent and it's extremely strong. People will take tents such as that onto the south col of Everest. Therefore, you would like to expect that any sort of weather the Lake District or Snowdonia can throw at it, the tent will be absolutely fine. So that's why I got it, because I wanted a bomb-proof tent to use anywhere in the most horrendous weather. It's quite heavy. I'll, uh, I'll probably show you the specs, uh, overlay them over this when I'm talking, but if you go in a couple of you, just split the tent up between two rucksacks, <coughs> and you've got a bomb-proof bomb shelter, wherever you need it. Mountain 25 by North Face, serious bit of kit, can be used on Everest and uh, it will serve you well. So let's leave that there. Number two in the proper four season mountaineer and tents is the Trango 2 by Mountain Hardware. Again, it's, it's a heavy, heavy tent. Purchased that one again, a number of years ago, um, again, I just like the design. It's um, external poles over the fly sheets, really easy to put up. Um, geodesic design, again, a proper four season, winter mountaineer and tent. Very heavy, really warm inside. Uh, it's like a coated fly sheet on that one. There's some newer versions now, as there are with the Mountain 25 but that's fully taped seams on the Trango 2 by Mountain Hardware. Again, I'll overlay the specs whilst I'm talking. Cracking bit of kit. Walshie and I use this one on Pendle Hill in those horrific conditions of that winter wild camp which you saw last February. I'll put a link to the description at the end of this video. But this tent, it was 70, 70 mile an hour winds. It was probably gusting towards 80. I'm not exaggerating, it was horrific. And that tent, one of the poles is very, very slightly bent, but nothing, uh, there's, you know, it's not damaged as such, it's a very tiny bend in it, but that tent 
it's unbelievable, very strong. Similar to the Mountain 25, which is just as strong, but it's just different brands, similar sort of design, just personal preferences and design aesthetics, really. So that's that. <coughs> um, number three in the four season Mountaineer Intense is the, uh, the Solo by Hilleberg. Um, this particular model, you've seen it on a couple of my camps. Uh, it's sand coloured. It's a, it's a brilliant, brilliant tent. Uh, it's the most expensive and outrageous purchase I've ever made for a piece of camping equipment. But my view is, if looked after correctly, coupled with the warranty which Hilleberg offer, this is a tent which will that'll serve you for, for life. If you look after this kit, take care of it, always make sure it's dry when it's put away. Uh, leave it open and unrolled out of the stuff sacks. Get one of those massive plastic boxes in your loft. Uh, and just leave it flat as much as you can or loosely folded this tent will last you for life it is reasonably lightweight the material is extremely strong specs over the video again it's a brilliant tent it's uh, it's absolutely bomb proof worst conditions I've probably used it in are um, in the Peak District on Shining Tour I'll link that video again in the description but it's a brilliant bit of kit really nice looking tent it, you can put this one up so easy, it's much more easy to erect than the Trango 2 and the Mountain 25 in that it's external poles, so you literally get onto your plot, guideline to your rucksack doesn't, so it doesn't blow away in bad weather, um, basically peg out your fabric, insert the poles into the external sleeves, very easy, there's three poles and basically you just then clip the uh, fly sheet fabric onto the poles and it's up in no time. There's two guy lines per, per each corner of the pole as well so it doesn't move um, and it's a lovely tent. You can sit up in that as well. Really, really nice. Very strong. You can use that all year round in any conditions as long as you put it up correctly. So yeah, that, that completes the, the four season winter mountaineering collection of MCM Outdoor Show. 25, Mountain 25 by North Face, the Solo by Hilleberg, and the Mountain Hardware, Trango 2. Now moving on to what I would describe as campsite camping is the Van Gogh Equinox 350, which is sadly no longer made. Um, that particular tent is a tunnel design, very, very spacious. It's now been superseded by the Van Gogh Omega. It's a three pole tent and it's a tunnel tent. Very, very simple to put up. Um, external pole sleeves on that one, which are flat so it doesn't catch the wind. It's built as a sort of D of E type tent, a bit more um, substantial than uh, some of the lesser range. You don't make it anymore. It's a three person tent. You've seen it in some of the videos. I'll put a link, uh, I'll overlay a description about that one, but it's great. It's got a lovely big porch area, which you can sit up in. You can put two camping chairs in there easily. Uh, you can cook in there if the weather's inclement or it's raining. Play cards, drink beers, and it's got a nice big sleeping area. Spacious for two, and you can fit three in there as well easily. It's a great tent. It's very, very old that now, and I've had to replace the poles on a couple of occasions because it's uh, being, being a tunnel tent, it's a little bit more vulnerable to wind. It's got the TBS, the tension band system, which is a series of uh, fabric um, strips inside the tent which will clip to various sections which give it a bit of lateral rigidity which are meant to make it a little bit stronger in windy conditions but again um, inherently a little bit less stable by design a tunnel design tent it's a brilliant tent and I love that it's a, the kids love that one as well <coughs> second one by Van Gogh is the uh, it's the Tempest 200 um, I love that tent again it's a it's a tunnel design it's uh, it's literally two poles and uh, there's a little pole just to top the awning just to just to give it a bit of a stretch on the fabric but it's great it's a two person tent but in, in reality it's like a luxury one man tent use that one on October camp um, it's great really well made it's been sort of superseded by a later model now. This is about five years old. But it's a brilliant tent, really nice little tent. Um, I've used that on quite a couple of the October videos. And it's never let me down, really like it. Decent bit of kit. Similar to the, um, 
Similar to the Tempest is a Spectre 200 again by Van Gogh. Um, yeah, again, it's a tunnel, two pole design, quite an old one now. It's it's no longer made. And um, this was actually a gift off my sister. She used it on um, a world challenge. <coughs> she went over to Africa teaching and she used that in some pretty, uh, almost sort of tropical conditions. So my sister didn't use that anymore and she very kindly donated it to me. I've used it in the back garden with uh, one of my children. I've never used it out on the fells. Uh, it could do with a couple of little repairs or some sort of rips to it, but it's fine. Um, and the kids like to, well, they can play in it if they want to, but it's a Spectre 200, two person, tunnel design tent. Quite light, again, you could use it as a as a backpacking or wild wild camping tent, but yeah, it's quite an old one, but again, good, good bit of kit. So, uh, moving on to the proper wild camping tent. Um, this is a, well, you won't really see this anymore because they don't make it. It's by MSR. And it's called a skinny one and it's basically as you can see there it's just a long tunnel with two poles <coughs> really strong poles quite a small package as well that comes in um, it's a brilliant bit of kit uh, Matt goes mad because I have never used this tent ever I've not used this on a mountain I've never I've never actually slept out in it it's a uh, yeah, it's not as stable because it's just a long tunnel. And there's not many videos online, but it's quite. It's got a really nice feature, which is unique about it because the head end, you can unzip the fly sheet, and uh, it's just a mesh all the way. So if it's like a nice, clear, dry summer's night, you can pretty much see through the fly sheet and just sit out and look at the stars and not get eaten alive by mosquitoes and midges and things like that. Got a nice porch area. The only downside to this, which is maybe why it's not as popular, is that it's a single skin design. So as such, anyone that knows anything about camping, um, single, si single skin tents are inherently prone to developing condensation inside. To counter they tried to counteract it by putting some venting, some mesh venting on the roof, which you can open or close as you see fit. But uh, in fairness, I can't really criticise it because I've never used it other than just having a faff around in the back garden. It was on offer in the shop in Manchester and it was one of those spontaneous purchases. I didn't actually need it, but I just bought it basically. Really nice fabric on it, really well made. Typical MSR, which is mountain safety research quality. Very, very light pegs. Um, you could get away with that while camping on your own. It's quite long, so you need to find a suitable pitch, but I think I need to use that. Let me know what you think. It needs to, uh, it's been a complete waste. It's probably over 10 years old as well and it's it's never been out with me so I need to address that. And finally, last but by no means least, is this tiny, tiny Van Gogh Force 10 Helium Superlight 100. Now, um, this is the tent which I used on the last videos uh, when I did some wild camping on Red Screes. <coughs> the videos that we've just put on the channel with Hosky and Matt, it's very, very, very light indeed. It's just got one pole, a single pole. There is actually a tiny, tiny pole, which gives you a little bit more room in the foot end, which just sticks up vertically there. But it's so light and the pack size is so small. The reason I got away with that Fjall Raven 35 litre rucksack was no other reason than this tent is so, so small. It's so lightweight. It's Force 10, which is Van Gogh's slightly more durable range and um, designed for a, a little bit more extreme conditions basically um, there's no guy lines on it which is a bit strange there's one down at the foot end but there's no guy lines so I have used this tent a couple of times there was one camp when I, I used to do a written blog which is now being deleted but Matt and I went and um, wild camped in the middle of winter on Angle Tarn on Bowfell and the weather deteriorated. It was absolutely like blizzard conditions. Very, very strong winds. The whole tent was flattened most of the night. And it was like, like lying in a wet bin bag, which was being blown onto you by at the back of a jet engine. It literally no sleep, but the tent, other than a ripped guy line, it performed quite well. So it's a good tent. It's quite claustrophobic. 
downsides to this is if you're quite tall, I'm six foot, you can't sit up in this tent. Um, and in terms of cooking, if the weather's inclement or it's raining, you're going to struggle because there isn't a huge porch area. So you've got to be really careful in terms of what you do using a stove and stuff inside this kind of tent. That's one of the benefits from the air. Uh, the Hillerberg and some of the, the four season ones. So in short, if you're going in the middle of winter, um, you're going to want to basically fork out. Obviously they're quite expensive and heavy. Massively expensive, um, but it's a one-off. And I sort of just treated myself to that. Um, not so bad for the Trango 2. You can get them used on eBay. Keep your eyes out for some bargains, but obviously check them out before you, you take the plunge and make the purchase. Quite expensive, but uh, really well made, the North Face. Um, this is my go-to tent at the moment because I've just bought it and I'm, I'm still in the sort of testing phase. But if I, if I now like uh, Pendle Hill, the weather's gonna be really bad, take something like the Trango 2. Lightweight backpacking, equip yourself with something like this. Um, these are just what I would recommend, or Terra Nova make really decent lightweight tents as well. Um, and then Van Gogh, if you wanna go with the kids and things like that, they make an excellent range. That's now the Omega range, uh, which has taken over that, which has an inbuilt sewn in ground sheet with a bathtub floor, which keeps the mud and dirt out and um, you can stay really clean and dry inside that. And then some of the, if you just want a little bit more luxury and you may be staying around a campsite, obviously, like I said, you've got the, the Tempest 200 and the Spectre 200. So, um, I'm gonna have some gin. In fact, I'm gonna get some of that now. I'm gonna stick this video online and then I'm gonna consult the maps because I'm going back up to the lovely Lake District on Saturday uh, for another wild camp possibly and uh, a nice walk. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Hopefully you found this video quite informative. I've been speaking without a break for 15 minutes and I'm starting to lose my voice. <coughs> and that's why I keep coughing, sorry. So again, if you find this video interesting, you wanna see more like this, I'm gonna, like, like I said at the start of the video, put some short videos together for different seasons and like every bit of kit I would take. And hopefully anyone who hasn't done it before and wants to get into wild camping, um, it will be very helpful for you. Head over to Facebook, look for MCM Outdoor Show. We've got an official page. Follow it and like it, if you do like it indeed. Um, and you can join our group. We've got a closed group. All about wild camping, drinking beer, messing around and light heart banter, taking the mick out of Walshie and things like that. But uh, all jokes aside, it'd be great if we could grow the group um, and it's just getting a group of like-minded people together who ultimately share a love of the outdoors. We're also on Instagram, got an Instagram feed with anything and everything. Um, tends just to be outdoor and beer related pictures on there. So if you like that, look for MCM Outdoor Show on Instagram. There's also a Twitter feed, which I update now and again, at MCM Outdoor Show. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button. There'll be plenty more videos to come, including this weekend when I'm heading back to the Lake District. Stay tuned and make sure you keep enjoying the great outdoors. See you on the next one.